That's really where the meat and potatoes of this is. And initially, at one point, one day I thought, gee, I got this. Let's see how that's gonna work. So I, I took a piece and I scored it and put it up there. I didn't wanna get really involved in a lot of framing, so I screwed them together. And you know, it looks nice and neat. It really does look neat, it looks great. And I was pleased with that at first. Welcome to vanofaction.com. We're converting our 2018 Dodge ProMaster van into a family camper and sharing the journey. And this week is really special. This week we're talking about the inside liners of our upper cabinets. I wanted something that was functional, pretty, and easy to remove. And if my first effort was made of wood, it worked fine. I met all that criteria, but it was a lot of work, a lot of cutting, a lot of hours. And then I had an idea and it was like magic, just magic. Let me show you. I was really happy with the look of that. I thought it was great. The truth is they're a little bit shallower because it's a hard surface, a little bit shallower. I've got insulation behind it. As I came into the kitchen cupboards, it was great, but there was a bit of an issue with it because I was using, there wasn't a lot of framework. And so it was a little bit loose. This is loose and as it's not rattling, it's not making noise, but it's not just not perfect. And then I got this guy and you see what happens. This is that wool insulation I was talking about in the insulation video. Over the course of time, it's been six months, this stuff just starts falling off and looks all, all ratty. I got some more I can replace it with, but I gotta find a way to hold that up. So on this side, I'm gonna experiment with the leftover material that I had from the backsplash. I'm gonna give that a shot and see what happens. Now, while I was working on the backsplash, I came, I, th I was working with this plastic. And it was, it's about an eighth, less than an eighth of an inch thick, maybe a sixteenth of an inch thick. It's, but it's got enough form to it. I was thinking what I might be able to do is bend it up and have it spring back just a little bit and have it take that shape. Maybe I should, I should do that down here. I have the insulation behind it. Push it up. Let it spring back just a little bit. So I'm going to measure where that should be cut, right there. Okay. And if I do the same at this end, put it up. This might work out really well. I had a good feeling about this. Cutting sheet goods is a really clumsy thing to do, but it can be made to be really easy. And all you're trying to do is find something that's gonna hold up all that material while you're passing it over the saw. So in this particular case, my first cut is going to be a lot shorter than the sheet is wide. I'm gonna have a lot of material hanging on over the edge of the saw table. So what I've gotta do is scrounge around the shop and try and find a way to build something that's going to hold up all that excess material so I can focus on the cut I'm trying to make. In this case, these two boxes are the boxes my water tanks came in. And these are the water tanks. And just by coincidence, those two combined like that are going to come out almost to the height of the table. Now, I want to build at least to be level with the tabletop, but I could be two, three, even four inches higher than the saw table bed, and it wouldn't make any difference at all, but I don't want to be lower. Now, if I put this ladder across on top, I'm coming out almost perfect, but I'm concerned about the leading edge of my material catching on the rungs as I pass it through. So I'm going to add a one inch by one inch piece of aluminum on top of those rungs. So the material is going to slide right along that aluminum be really handy and easy. So I've changed the, uh, the blade to one with lots of teeth, as many teeth as I could get. And the one thing you want to be aware of too, is this is a very skinny material. And so as you're pushing it through against the fence, I'll often have a, a tendency to slide under the fence as you're going. It can be a real problem as you, once you get halfway through your sheet. So what I've done is, I just take a piece of, of plywood and just set it here to make sure that as I push this sheet through, it's not going under, it's, it's up against the fence. Let's give that a shot. You also want to be very aware of safety. So this is a plastic. It's going to come off in little chips. So you need to want to make sure you've got good eye protection. And of course, you need your ear protection. Now this is a part of the job that you may want to practice two or three times with the saw blade down and the power off. Another set of hands would make this process a lot easier. 
but at the, at the same time, the coordination between the two people has to be on, or it could be really be a, a dog's breakfast. The trick here is to get the sheet goods on the saw bed ahead of the blade. So the front leading edge of the material is on the saw bed. Before you push it through, it's got to be all positioned properly. You have to get the sheet on the saw bed with the blade going because once it's actually in place, you can't reach the switch anymore. Your arms aren't long enough. So it's going to take a little bit of care, a little bit of practice, but it really isn't very hard once you figure it out. You lift it over the blade and drop it down. Again, I'm trying to get the leading edge on top of the, the, the saw bed. And once it's there, I take a minute and make sure that everything's lined up so it's going to push nice and straight. And then it's just a matter of pushing. At this moment, there's no work left at all. This is the easiest part. I just walk it through the saw blade. Notice the position of my head. This is easy as can be and very safe. And now, notice this maneuver. And in this particular cut, the sheet is a lot longer than the, the cut is wide, so it's easy. I just have to set it up on the blade, hold the back end nice and high so it's flat as it passes past the saw blade, and just push it through. This couldn't be simpler. I did there I want to tell you about. The first is, as I was cutting it, before I cut it through, did you notice I took it and I rotated the sheet? I always want to have the factory edge against the fence. So the first cut I made, I was, the factory edge was against the fence. There might have been a little, a little bit of waver in that when I was walking it through alone. So the second cut, I rotated it around so the factory edge was against the fence again. So now this piece, this, so this off cut has two of the cuts that I made on it. It just makes it easier to do it right and make it straight. The second thing I wanted to mention to you was as I'm pushing it through, I'm not looking at the saw blade. Long pieces like this, when you push them through, the blade, focus on the fence and make sure you've got good contact the whole length of the fence. Don't even think about the blade. As you push it through, you're watching here. This is where the trouble occurs, not here. The, if the saw blade binds, it's because you're not up against the fence properly. So for long sheets, always, always, always watch your fence. And then when you get down to the end, then make sure you're not going to cut your fingers off. But it's the fence is the important part of a lot of when you're cutting sheet goods. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. This will be the dry run to see how it's going to fit. I don't know how it's going to be able to get in there. Because of this mullion, I know I'm not going to be able to get a whole piece in from, like, that would go from side to side. So I'm gonna, I've tried to cut it about halfway. We'll see if we can put it in and see how it goes. I don't know. It seemed like a really good idea at the time, but it really is going to be a little bit stiff right now. All right. And warm it up a little bit. You know what? That might just be an idea. Hang on a second. Okay. I thought what I would do, it seemed a little bit stiff. I thought what I would do maybe just heat it up a little bit with my heat gun. And maybe that might help it to be a little more flexible. You really can't see this very well, I guess. I'm just warming it up. Is it should become a little more flexible, is the whole question. I got a hunch this is going to be ideal when I get it in there, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's making a difference. Let's try that. Real time. I don't want to 
actually the kind of thing that may be better done with a with a partner, but I don't want to. I don't want to mar. I don't want to mar the outside here. First one's always a challenge. There we go. There we go. Let's see, straighten up the insulation. Looks like a million dollars. Check that out. Check that out. Get out of there. Look at that. That looks fantastic. That's that's gonna stay there too. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I love it when something like that happens. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut the next one. And I'm just gonna let them overlap a little bit. I think that'll be fine. Okay, but I'm back in with the second one. For this second piece, what I've done is I've taken, I've drilled two holes in it. Hope you see those. Just in case once it's up there, I ever have to make, I get it out. I wanna be able to get my finger in so I can pull it down and spring it down and pull it out again. I think once it's up there, it's gonna be tough. I also have a, a hole drilled here because I have two wires coming up for future lighting. I didn't know whether I wanted to have lights under here or not. Uh, and I wasn't sure what kind of lights because we've got the two back seats as well. And I didn't know whether they should be reading lights or the puck lights or what the deal was. So I ran the wire in so it would be here. And uh, for now, I'm just going to just, just pull it through this little hole and that'll be it. So let's see if we can do this again. I'm going to do this in real time again. Try doing this in real time. I'm going to heat it up again. Stop this. I think it's nice to do things in real time so people can see just how hard or how easy it, it is. You have to be plugged in. It's important to be plugged in. It's my friend Grayson's birthday today. I haven't seen him in a long time. But I'm looking forward to seeing him on our trip back to Ontario coming up. He likes beer as much or more than I do. And so we're gonna have a beer, I hope, in the way. Or six. A little bit of heat helps this to become a little more pliable. Oh yeah, can't make that's pretty good. This one, I'm going to try to bring it in from this end. So I got that a little warmer than the last one. There. A little warmer than the last one, so it's going to be a little bit easier than the last one. Over here. So it's closer to where it's supposed to go. And then I got to get these wires through. These wires are hot, so I gotta do them one at a time. Not a problem as long as I have them protected. You may recall when I built these cabinets, I built spaces right in here. Oh, sorry. Oh heck, you missed the whole thing. Okay, well I got it up there. I'm not taking it out. really tight. 
which is good, which is what you want. This one should probably have been just a little bit narrower because it's got this, this stinking hump that's been bugging us. Let me take a look at this. The hump in this frame has been a problem right from day one. You'll see it's right, it's holding this part out just a little bit and I've been fighting with this darn hump around the window frame. And remember, we still have to deal with it down below as well from the, from the uh, vinyl panels, but I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna move that over just a little bit. I know I am. There we go. There we go. There we are, right there like that. There we are. That looks amazing. I am really, really happy with that. Now, what I should have done was, I see it now, and this is something you'll have to, you can learn from. I should have put the left one in first. I should have put this one in first because the joints there, I don't know, maybe you can't see it on the camera, but you see the, the overlap. If this one was on top, you wouldn't see that line. I'll do that in the next one. Excellent. I'm happy with this. I'm ready to try putting the one in this good. one. Now, this upper cupboard doesn't have a mullion, a divider between the doors like this one does. I left this one open. You don't really notice it when the doors are closed anyway, and I thought this might give us a little more flexibility in the space. But because of that, I'm gonna see if I can put this one in without heating it up. Again, I've cut the two holes just in case I need it. So let's just see how this is gonna work. I think this one might just spring in for me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it should work. Put my finger in there, my finger in there, push! Good God! Good God, that's fantastic. Oh, it sure is in there tight though. Man, man, man that's up a little bit. I have to move it, yeah, I really have to have it about where you want it before you, you get too carried away because it's hard to move after, matter of fact. There we are. Huh. Huh. That's fantastic. It's just amazing. That's in there. And I was gonna again I didn't I couldn't put it all in one piece. I didn't want to try and put it in one piece, so I'm gonna try and now just cut a piece for the other end. This is going really well. And here they are. And you witnessed it almost in real time. And look how clean that looks. It's just beautiful. It took next to no time at all. And I gotta tell you, these were a lot of work, even just to be the way they are, and they're still not perfect. I've got a hunch that after my trip, I'm gonna be doing more of these for the top covers. This is just perfect. And they're really in there tight too. They can't, there's not a lot of play. There's not a lot of play, it feels like a solid. That's good. Thanks so much for watching this far. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. And stay tuned, there's more coming. Be well and be safe.